On the coast of Bangladesh, families watch the waves creep closer every day. Farms vanish, villages crumble, entire islands disappear. Yet, here's the paradox. This is a country that creates new land every year. And still, it's losing territory at an alarming rate, among the fastest on Earth. A nation that builds, yet sinks. The numbers are staggering. Around 32 square kilometers of land is lost a year. Millions of people are displaced, a crisis unfolding in plain sight. But here's what most people miss. This isn't just another climate change headline. Something far more complex is happening. A collision of rivers, politics, and global economics that has turned survival itself into a gamble. So, why is Bangladesh disappearing faster than it can rebuild? And can the most ambitious flood defense project on the planet really save a country from being swallowed by the sea? Bangladesh owes its existence to a geopolitical contradiction. It's built on the largest river delta on Earth, a massive flat plain of silt and sand carried down from the Himalayas by three of the world's most powerful rivers, the Ganges, the Brahmaputra, and the Meghna. Together, these rivers dump more than 1 billion tons of sediment into the Bay of Bengal every year. For thousands of years, this was a delicate balance. Rivers would flood during monsoons, depositing life-giving sediment, creating new land called chars and fertilizing fields. This delta-building process, it's why Bangladesh can support more than 175 million people on a landmass smaller than the US state of Wisconsin, which has a population of under 6 million. The same geopolitical forces that make it one of the most fertile places on Earth also make it one of the most vulnerable. But these rivers are a double-edged sword. The same immense power that builds land can destroy it in hours. Regular riverbank collapses can devour entire villages, which have existed for generations, leaving them to be swept away by the water. The currents are so powerful, they undercut hundreds of feet of land at once, taking out homes, businesses, schools, and markets with little warning. On Bola Island, the country's largest island, around 20% of its landmass has vanished to erosion in recent decades, displacing more than half a million people. But the rivers are just the first threat. There is another to the south. The Bay of Bengal doesn't announce its arrival. It creeps. Sea level rise isn't uniform across the globe. Due to ocean currents and thermal expansion, sea levels in the Bay of Bengal are rising significantly faster than the world average. While the global average is 3.3 millimeters per year, parts of Bangladesh's coast see up to 8 millimeters annually. But it gets worse. The land itself is sinking. The very sediment that created the delta is compacting under its own weight, a process called subsidence. In a healthy delta, this sinking gets offset by new layers of sediment from rivers every year. But as we'll see, that supply of new soil is being choked off. So, you have a devastating double effect. The sea is rising and the land is sinking, dramatically closing the gap between them. Without adaptation, one meter of sea level rise could inundate close to 20% of Bangladesh, displacing between 15 and 30 million people. But long before the land goes permanently underwater, salt water makes it uninhabitable. As the sea pushes inland, salt water intrudes into river systems and groundwater, poisoning the foundation of life and destroying agricultural land, making it unusable for crops. This salinization is also devastating the Sundarbans, the world's largest mangrove forest. As salinity rises, these trees are dying in huge numbers, destroying a vital natural barrier which protects the coast from cyclones. But while nature's forces are immense, human decisions have turned a manageable situation into a geopolitical catastrophe. Here's where the story becomes infuriating and deeply political. Much of the water which flows into Bangladesh begins its journey in India. How India controls and manages the water on its side of the border has a substantial impact on the Bangladeshi population further downstream. The issue has become a geopolitical flashpoint. In the 1970s, India built the Faraka Barrage on the Ganges, just miles from the border. The stated purpose was diverging water to the port of Kolkata, but it had a catastrophic consequence for its neighbor. Less water now flows into Bangladesh during the dry season, creating water shortages and crop failures. 
Meanwhile, closer to the sea, the river salination is increasing due to a lack of fresh water flowing downstream, again damaging agriculture. It also became a giant trap for sediment. This is the exact sediment needed to replenish the delta and counteract natural land sinking and erosion. Issues are further compounded by sudden releases of water by India to serve its own flood risk needs, which can lead to devastating floods in Bangladesh at short notice. These environmental factors, they have forced millions of Bangladeshis to migrate to safer areas, with many seeking refuge in India, leading to tensions between the two nations. It's a perfect storm. As Bangladesh suffers from water challenges upstream, its natural coastal defenses are being stripped away. All this comes as sea levels continue to rise annually. Its coastal barriers, in the shape of the mangrove forests, are dying due to salination and, in other cases, being illegally cleared for shrimp and crab farming, a multi-million pound industry which is destroying a priceless natural shield. When Cyclone Sida hit in 2007, Areas protected by mangroves suffered far less damage than cleared areas. But Bangladesh's crisis extends far beyond its borders, threatening global supply chains that depend on this disappearing delta. This isn't just a regional problem. Bangladesh's land loss threatens the world economy. Flooding threatens global textile supply chains, as Bangladesh is the world's second largest clothing exporter, and its rice production is critical to global food security. Major international brands source billions of dollars worth of garments from factories in coastal areas now under threat. A single major flood could disrupt supplies worldwide. Bangladesh also produces more than 35 million tons of rice annually, helping feed global markets. Salt intrusion is already forcing farmers to abandon millions of acres of productive farmland. With the land disappearing and global supply chains at risk, Bangladesh has developed the world's most ambitious plan to fight back. Bangladesh isn't accepting defeat. They've become a living laboratory for climate adaptation, and their response is staggering in scope. It's called the Bangladesh Delta Plan 2100, a massive 100-year strategy designed to make the country resilient to climate change and water disasters. The plan is modeled on the Netherlands, another country living below sea level. It involves building networks of dikes, seawalls, and polders, which are areas of reclaimed land enclosed by dikes, alongside dredging rivers to improve water flow. Improved weather monitoring and alert systems are also being introduced, and flood-resilient construction methods are being used to protect homes and businesses. This includes building more raised homes, ones with sacrificial floors, improved drainage, and other measures. But the most ambitious part, it's building new land from scratch. By strategically building cross dams that trap sediment, engineers are reclaiming land and creating new islands. Once this land gets stabilized and properly protected, the long-term plan is to use these areas for settlement and agriculture. It's working with the rivers, not against them, to rebuild what's been lost. Local communities aren't waiting for mega-projects either. They've developed incredible innovations, homes built on raised earthen mounds, and floating agriculture on rafts made of water hyacinth. These aren't people waiting for handouts, they're innovators adapting to an impossible situation. But this raises the ultimate question, can engineering and human ingenuity really hold back the forces reshaping our planet? The first phase of the Delta Plan is already estimated to have cost more than $37 billion, and there's much more work ahead to be completed over the decades to come. The cost of the total project is set to spiral far higher. Meanwhile, the lives of millions of Bangladeshis, along with their homes and businesses, hang in the balance. Even with the most ambitious plans, not all coastline can be saved. A managed retreat from the most vulnerable areas seems inevitable. This isn't just an engineering problem, it's a geopolitical challenge that questions the very idea of stable borders in a climate-changed world. If a country's land disappears, what happens to the country itself? The fight for Bangladesh's coastline is a preview of what many coastal regions will face. From Miami to Jakarta, from Venice to the Maldives, this is our shared future. Bangladesh's crisis forces us to confront an uncomfortable truth. 
The decisions we make today about emissions, development and international cooperation will determine whether innovative adaptation can keep pace with accelerating change. Bangladesh highlights the scale of the challenge and the power of human adaptation. They're literally building new land while losing ancient ground. But here's the brutal reality. The same rivers that built Bangladesh are erasing it, and no seawall may be tough enough to stop what's coming. The next decade will determine whether their enormous flood prevention and mitigation project will pay off and whether it will protect the future of the nation. Low-lying countries and coastal communities elsewhere, they'll be watching Bangladesh closely, as its success or failure could be a scene played out in other nations soon around the world. The question is whether we will have the will, ingenuity and technology to battle against a stubborn nature successfully. The answer is being written in the lives of Bangladesh and in the shifting sands of the Bay of Bengal.